Welcome to on-demand instructions video about analyzing and interpreting a literary piece. This presentation is based on the Common Core Standards for Literature. In this session, we will be covering Core Standard number one. By the end of this session, you should be able to analyze a literary text to understand its explicit meaning. You should also be able to figure out from the text's imp implicit meaning and draw inferences from it. Lastly, you should be able to support your inferences by citing specific parts of the text. Why is literature important to us, and why should we even bother analyzing it? Literature allows us to experience a way of life, a point in time, a certain culture or specific deed or emotion. It transports us back to faraway lands or to worlds that exist only in the author's mind. It is a source of information and of wisdom. The level of satisfaction we get from a literary piece depends on how well we understand the text and its underlying message. This is where our literary analysis skills will be of great use. For our first activity, let's read and analyze each stanza of the poem by Emily Dickinson, which talks about dying. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves an immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children strove at recess in the ring. We passed the fields of grazing grain, we passed the setting sun. Or rather, he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill, for only gossip, gossamer my gown. My tippet only tool. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice in the ground. Since then, tis centuries, and yet feel shorter than the day. I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. Now that we've understood the explicit text, let us read from a sample inference that can be made from the text and the citation that supports the inference. We may infer that we should not fear death since it is just a step on the way to eternal life. To support this statement, we refer to some sections of the poem, lines three to four of the first stanza, which reads, the carriage held but just ourselves in immortality, indicates that the main character's journey doesn't just stop at death. Lines 23 to 24 of the sixth stanza, which reads, I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity, indicates eternal life as the final destination of the main character's journey. What other inferences can you draw from the poem you just read? Do you think the main character was fully prepared for her journey toward death and eternal life? Read lines 14 through 16 of the fourth stanza to find out. Do you think she had a choice about when she was to die? Read the first two lines of the poem for the answer. Try to draw more inferences from the poem and provide supporting evidences. Now that you are familiar with the process of literary analysis, you might ask yourself, why is it important to acquire this skill and where can I possibly apply what I've learned? You might not realize it now, but you're a ability to correctly analyze text and communicate your ideas clearly and effectively will serve you well, both in and out of the classroom. First of all, this skill can help you get through school projects that involve cr critical reading. Evaluating TV and movie scripts will be much easier when you have effectively analyzed their underlying literature. Feasibility studies become more accurate when the data gathered has been correctly analyzed. Now that you have an idea on how this skill can help you in the real world, it's time to develop this skill further. Read the short story, The Gift of the Magi, and use the skills that you've learned in this session to write an essay describing why the main character's gifts to one another were considered the wisest. You can find this story at the following link. While doing this activity, you might come across some questions. The most common question is, where do I start? Or what should I know first when writing about poetry? A good start would be to realize that you are making a written argument. Make sure that you have something specific you want to say about the text. 
Another question is, what can I write about? Common subjects include theme, the plot, and characters. What guidelines should I use? Writing verbs in the present tense is a common practice. Making use of as many citations as you can to support your argument is also good practice. Lastly, familiarize yourself with the Modern Language Association format when including citations from outside sources. In completing this lesson, you are expected to understand that a literary text can have multiple meanings. You are also expected to be able to analyze the text to explain its explicit and implicit meanings and make inferences from these meanings. Lastly, you are expected to be able to cite parts of the text that best support your inferences. In this session, we learned how to analyze text, draw inferences, and cite supporting information. We did this using Emily Dickinson's poem, Because I Could Not Stop for Death. For further reading on this lesson, you may refer to the resources links. Thank you for watching! And don't forget to check back at www.ondemandinstruction.com for more instructional videos, podcasts, and materials. We update the site weekly.